Just six weeks after lifting a blanket travel advisory, Ottawa has issued a non-essential travel advisory urging Canadians not to travel internally. The advice will be in place for at least a month. Now is not the time to travel. And I know after the year we've had, after the almost two years we've had, people were really looking forward to getting away, to not having to think about COVID. But the reality is we have to think about COVID. Omicron means we have to be even more careful. And that's why we've raised the travel advisory to advising against all non-essential travel. So this advisory, no doubt, is going to have an impact on travelers who are either A, already on vacation, or B, planning on going on vacation during the winter break. With more on what people need to know is Martin Firestone, the president of Travel Secure. Martin, great to have you with us. Uh, so the federal government issuing this uh, travel advice advisory yesterday, encouraging people not to travel if it's non-essential or only for essential reasons. But I think... This word essential is kind of subjective, right? Because after a pandemic where things have been shut down, Christmases have been missed, people are saying, hey, look, I've been in isolation. I need to see my family. This is essential. Not only that, in November, the pent-up demand and, and their desire to travel, they tasted it. And basically, it's really difficult for many of them to now take a step back and change their plans. But some are and some are not. It all depends on about risk and who feels like they want to take chances. Yeah, I mean, it feels like you're trying to jam the toothpaste back into the tube, and anybody who's tried knows how hard that is to do, Martin. So what happens, what is your advice, I suppose, to people who either, A, have travel plans booked that are, you know, classically non-essential, let's say a beach vacation or something along those lines. What should people be doing, and what can people do if they decide, you know what, I'm not going to go? So let's talk about it. I mean, this year is far different than last year. This year, we are fully vaccinated, some with even a third booster shot. So the fear and risk of ending up in a hospital in an ICU on a ventilator are far, far different than last year, and hopefully only a mild case at best. But the biggest question I'm being asked yesterday with the advisory, does that negate the travel insurance portion of your policy with respect to COVID? I'm comfortable in saying for the most part, most insurers are not having any issue with this and they are not changing their policies at all. So people can travel. They need travel insurance. They need to confirm with the insurer. It is covering COVID in lieu of the travel advisory. And then it's their decision what to do and whether to go or not. Okay, and Martin, let's kind of fast forward and play it out a bit. Let's say uh, things do spread like wildfire with Omicron and people do travel and they get stuck, not yeah. necessarily in South Africa, but wherever they are. What do they do then? Yeah, well, that's interesting what you say. You see, it's one thing to get stuck, in my mind anyway, internationally and far away, and another to get stuck just in southern Florida, let's say. So there are concerns, and you will be covered from a medical perspective if, in fact, you came down with COVID or any unexpected medical emergency. But the fear, like anything else, is what if the border closes or the border to our country? And you could get stuck. You can't negate that. It could happen, and people are going to have that in their little checklist of decisions to go or not to go. The one thing we have noticed, Martin, even in March of 2020, when, you know, there was that whole guidance about, you know, March break travel, go, don't go, you know, stop, go, red light, green light kind of situation here. Canadians, if you're a Canadian citizen, you're likely going to be able to get back into the country. It may just be a little more difficult than you had sort of initially expected. Yes, we cannot refuse Canadians at our border. No doubt the path and the route of getting there could be a little more difficult. But let's assume maybe that part doesn't happen. The big concern will be just airports. Leaving would be incredible long delays coming back. If they do testing at the airport level, I cannot imagine the lineups and chaos that will happen. And Martin, many people that are traveling right now that are saying, hey, I'm going to go anyway uh, because I booked this trip a year in advance. We had vaccinations. I didn't think we'd still be in this position. Going forward, when people are thinking, all right, I'm going to stay home this year, but I want to book for next year, what's your advice to them? To wait closer to the date until we see how this unravels or to just book it and then try to cancel it as they get closer to their trip if, fingers crossed, uh, we are not in this situation by the time next year? I sure hope we are out of it by then. But having said that, they just have to arrange with their end user, the tour guide, the excursion company, the Airbnb, the airlines, that if they have to cancel because of border closure, because of another wave, that they can get a refund, not even a credit, but a refund, because quite frankly, it is very difficult to plan going forward. And you can't be out large amounts of money at the risk of not being able to travel again. You know, Martin, it's interesting. I think a lot of people, when they've traveled pre-pandemic anyway, 
ah, insurance, I'll think about that. Maybe I'll get it. A lot of people kind of didn't do it at all. I think this has really refocused the attention on travel insurance and the importance of it, because as we're seeing right now, things can change in hours. Oh, big time. Travel insurance has taken on a life of its own now. Many people even thought they were covered through OHIP, only finding out now that that is a very small portion of the total cost. So if there's any light in that respect, it has definitely brought the attention of travel insurance as a must. And now with that advisory, you can't imagine all the calls that are coming and wondering whether they are still covered for COVID in light of the advisory. And the answer is yes, they are. So that's the good news at this point. Well, we appreciate you taking time to uh, talk to us this morning. We know you're really busy right now. Martin Firestone, the president of Travel Secure, thanks for joining us here on CB24 Breakfast again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care.